Uh, I'm Mike Kilroy, and I'm the brewmaster here at the Firehouse. Welcome to Firehouse Brewing Company and Firehouse Wine Cellars. We invite you to come inside and have a pint of beer or a glass of wine with us. We are South Dakota's oldest operating brewery. We were established in 1991. Our building is, is pretty neat. It actually was built in 1915 and served as Rapid City's only fire station up until the 70s. Um, so there they would sleep, um, you know, there was stabling for the horses, the front bay doors. Actually, once it got a little older, that's where they would bring the um, carts out. Um, and you can still see a lot of that history in the building. We still have the original fire pole. We have a lot of the original ladders, um, water trucks hanging from the ceiling. We looked through the city for original pieces from the fire station. Um, and by going in, you'll, you'll see that there's still a lot of that left. We've thrown parties where we, you know, buy all the firemen a beer. Um, we, we just try to do what we can to give back to those organizations. And um, a lot of people who do come to visit us um, on vacation will leave their fire fighting patches and we'll give them one of ours and then we'll, we'll take theirs and hang it on our wall. So. If you've ever driven across the state, um, you know that there is not a lot in the middle as, as far as things to look at. Lots of um, cattle grazing lands, plains. Um, so we have a, a series of billboards as you're coming into Rapid City with fire trucks next to them. And the idea was just to give somebody something to look at while they were <laughs> heading into town. We kind of took a page from um, the world famous Wall Drug, um, who must have 80 billboards um, lining I-90. And to buy about 10 of them, I have to go here. Well, the South Dakota beer movement's been crazy lately. It's been really fun. Um, for years, there was only just a couple. And now they're sprouting up everywhere, and God, you know, almost all of them make great beer. So now at the beer festivals, it's not just, you know, Crow Peak, myself, and Dempsey's and all the you know big guys it's all the south dakota breweries are coming together so it's a lot of fun i think that just the local beer the the need and the the interest in local beer is so strong in our area right now it's been really well received and we have some really accessible styles so it's not you know there is really truly a firehouse beer for everyone we try to always keep at least a couple of lighter um, lagers on tap just to appease the people who haven't really gotten into craft beer yet. But after trying those beers, we find that they're good gateway beers to get them into, you know, the reds and the German browns and the stouts and the IPAs. It's fun to convert those people that normally don't drink craft beer. Yeah, we also like to make a few beers that are kind of off the beaten path. But um, we, we try to have like a nice range. Um, we always keep a cider on. Uh, we generally try to keep a stout on, an IPA. So we try to make sure that there's a little something for everybody. I think before, well, before I started, the idea of making wine was kind of in the owner's heads. They, um, they mentioned and asked me if I'd made wine at home, and I, I had. Not as much as beer, but I'd made a little bit of wine at home. And uh, they said, well, would you ever be curious about learning more about it? And I said, well, sure. And we started making some wine. It's been fun. Um, it's not as easy as, well, to me, it's not as easy as making beer. Uh, but we have a winemaker from California, Rich Tangway, and he is an excellent winemaker, and he's kept me sane. In winemaking, we can't use these tanks. We have to use uh, a wine tank, and basically the biggest difference is um, once the ferment rolls, you know, you don't really need a lid on it. But once it's done fermenting, you can't let it oxidize. So in a beer tank where you can have a nice headspace, wine has to be full, the unit has to be full. So we use a depending lid that will drop down and then seal in any position to uh, whether we, you know, if we have a 1500 gallon tank, we only have a thousand gallons of wine, we bring that lid down it will seal it off. Um, Chef Dan is amazing back there. Um, they got him a big fancy smoker about a year ago, and the ribs and the chicken are just incredible. Um, he also does an andouille sausage, it's really good. Um, uh, brisket, that's delicious. Baked beans, 
And then, you know, we still have the old house favorites too. Um, our jambalaya is really good. And the artichoke cart dip has been a constant here since 1991. Uh, Chef Dan and I have only been pals since junior high. So it's, it's real easy to work with him. But um, yeah, so he'll come out and if he's like um, boiling a different kind of a sausage or something, he'll say, well, what beer should I use? When we first started making the cider, he was experimenting with that a little bit. Um, then when he brings food out, he, he also, you know, said, well, what beer would go good with this? We taste the food, we taste the beer, and it's, you know, it's pretty hard work, and it's not for everybody. But we have a lot of fun doing it, and we come up with some pretty good combinations. Um, the lager really pairs well with um, the gumbo, and um, they do a stop, drop, and roll, like decadent chocolate cake the size of a manhole cover, and it goes really good with the honey batter. Thank you for visiting us at Firehouse Brewing Company. We look forward to holding a glass up again with you soon. Cheers. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, you can click down below where there's some more episodes for you to watch. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on episodes that you do watch. We hope to see you next time.